Hello, my name is Reggie Eklund, and the title of my project is Inserting the Glowing Fluorescent Protein from P Glow into PTXB1. And the reason for this title is the glowing fluorescent protein, GFP, is taken from the plasmid, P Glow, and the purpose of this experiment is to take this glowing fluorescent protein, or GFP, and insert it into the PTXB1, which will then be inserted into E. coli, to test and see if the proper expression of this plasmid will cause the E. coli to grow and glow. So, the origin of GFP. Um, it is taken from the plasmid P. glow, and it is from Echoria victoria, or commonly known as crystal jelly, which is taken from jellyfish. And this protein, that if it is um, translated properly, will express glowing. So, the main um, feature of this experiment is genetic engineering, which uses um, restricting, cloning, and transforming to express um, the DNA. So, some brief examples of what this project uses is uh, PCR, DNA restriction, DNA ligation, DNA purification, transformation of E. coli, expression of newly introduced genes, and we'll go over all those in the keynote. So, a uh, little history on this experiment and on making E. coli glow in general. Um, you can change an E. coli's DNA and its um, expression of its genes by changing the genes themselves, or the DNA. And uh, previously in this experiment, the plasmid that was introduced into the E. coli was Puck19. Um, GFP is taken from the plasmid P. glow, which is then ins was then inserted into Puck19 and then inserted into the E. coli then the E. coli would grow and colonate with this new plasmid introduced into its um, cell and would essentially glow. Problem was that it would not glow and so my purpose of this experiment is to express GFP using a new plasmid which is PTXB1 which should allow the BL21D E3 E. coli to glow with the expression of this GFP. Um, so I hypothesize that by removing the multiple cloning site and the codons for additional amino acids from the PTXB1 plasmids and replacing it with GFP, E. coli that contain this newly engineered plasmid will express the GFP gene sequence and glow. Um, I will elaborate on that in the next slide. So here's a quick video showing how GFP is amplified. And how this works is um, the DNA is heated up in an incubator and as it heats up it begins to separate and denature and so as you can see here and so it is split on the first cycle and then these are little primers that attach to the DNA and what's going to happen is these primers are set um, where they're meant to go which are designed by the person the experimenter, and um, which is me in this case, and they are designed to find the exact um, translated site that you want. And these little type polymerases come in, and they copy exactly what the opposite um, strands of DNA to essentially clone it. So now, as you can see, as it cools down, these pieces of DNA are now multiplied by two. And so this process keeps going, and it exponentially grows with um, DNA. So this is how I acquire um, lots of GFP to use for the experiment. So what happens next? Um, enzymes are used. Now, these enzymes I chose are NDE1 and PST1. Um, these enzymes are used to cut pieces of DNA and also to create sticky ends, which will be later used in ligation when the um, the genes are placed into the PTXB1 from GFP. So first thing is restriction. And how restriction works is the enzymes and the DNA are mixed together in an epi, and then you can test the length of the bands of DNA that are cut up on an agarose gel, which uses electricity to, con to move the bands of DNA down the gel, and the bigger bands will go a shorter distance than the shorter bands, thus you can tell if you have cut precisely or not. So, 
this is how PTXP1 is prepared for ligation or the conjoining of GFP and the PTXP1. So here's PTXP1, the plasmid, and here are the enzymes. So these enzymes are going to go into the PTXP1 um, where they're meant to go. They'll find their cut sites and then they'll cut and it'll remove that section because there's two of them. If there were one, it would only make one cut and have one long circular piece of um, DNA. However, the reason why I chose two enzymes was to cut in this section right here, which would leave two sticky ends that was um, the correct translation for GFP to be inserted into. So, what's next is to get the piece of, the piece of GFP to put in that slot. So, the, here's the GFP. The first step is to purify leftover strands of DNA on the correct, on the GFP um, sequence because in using the primers they may leave leftover um, DNA strands that are not needed. So purifying takes off those ends. So here comes the same enzymes which are going to cut on each end to create sticky ends that will match up with the sticky ends on the PTXV1 and they will be mixed together to make a GFP and PTXV1 combination. However, there is a um, bit of a catch. Um, the NDE1 um, enzyme cuts in two places, um, not just in on the end and then the PST1 on the other end. So this would leave extra sticky ends and the GFP is cut in half. So that means that in the following steps, instead of ligating one piece of GFP into the PTXP1, I'm ligating two pieces of one main strand. So the catch here also is that there's a, plenty of those and not so plenty of the PTXP1. There's plenty of GFP, but not so much of PTXP1. So, which is also helpful because if the pieces go in correctly, as they should, like right here, then we'll, that will be the expression of going. However, they can go in backwards like that one just did, which would cause an opposite translation and would be not the right coding for the DNA or for the plasmid. So, there is an off chance to have improper translation and there's the chance that there will be good translation. So that's why there's lots of GFP to be used with PCR. So the next step is to transform the E. coli. So what happens is the ligation is mixed with E. coli and after the um, the mixture is created it is um, said to be incubated on uh, plates to grow overnight for the E. coli. So the Overnight, E. coli grows, and hopefully it will glow in theory. Now here are the results of this experiment. What happened was the E. coli had poor growing results. Um, however, the ligations were successful because when they were tested on an agarose gel, um, the ligation set showed that there was only one band of DNA showing that the GFP and the PTXB1 were glued together, in fact, and created one band of DNA. Um, the, but the E. coli did not grow enough for me to test and see if some of the um, E. coli would glow or not. And the reason for this, knowing that it was not the ligations and it was the, um, in fact, the E. coli with poor growing, was the control E. coli did not grow as much as it should it should have covered the plate with plenty of colonies. However, it was very um, dispersed and spread out and minimal. So to improve on this experiment is to fix the E. coli problem to achieve proper expression or to test if it was expressed or not. So um, further research and further, um, <clears throat> excuse me, further research and further experimentation would be finding a better suitable E. coli to grow and test the glowing. Um, so acknowledgments go to Henry Weeks and Seth Schneider, Keisha Matz, Lindsay Giffey, Jellyfish, and Gage McNaught. Henry Weeks is my teacher and I acknowledge him for letting me use his facilities and all the help he's given me. Seth Schneider for all of his um, help setting up this experiment for he had done prior and um, before I had taken over and use his uh, template for this. And uh, Keisha Matson, Lindsay Giffey for lab help and Gage McNaught for lab help as well. Thank you very much.